What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I am with my friend Tim and we are in extremely sunny and bright Phoenix, Arizona. And Tim is better known by his internet moniker, Cactus the Hut. Yeah. And why why do they call you Cactus the Hut? I, I was lost for anything more clever. Is it does it have to do with, with the Illuminate hut oh, well, that we yeah, got here? I was building the hut at the time. So. Okay, all right. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to show me and everybody else uh, on uh, YouTube around. Welcome. So, well, I, let's let's kick it off. Okay. Now, you and I actually met, I think, mm -hmm. we met initially, I think through Instagram. I think as I had hit you up. Yeah. And just said, yep. hey, I'm yep. coming to Arizona. Coming to and Arizona. And I was wondering if I could uh, link up with you. And you said, Sure, I don't know. Why man. not? I don't know, but uh. working from home makes me uh, it puts me at risk of having in, uh, Instagram people show up at my house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I noticed that you had a uh, uh, a sticker here. Yes. In fact, that we trust, which is a, a sticker that my buddy Julian made. Is, the Gangster's Quest one's right above. That's right. It sure is. So, tell me a little bit about how did you get into the? Uh, you got a pretty nice collection here. You've got plants all the way from the seedling stage up to some very large old specimen plants. How long have you been at the, uh, the hobby? Well, I moved to Arizona in 2003, and that's pretty much when I started. Uh, just a couple of plants like from the grocery store and Home Depot and that okay. kind of thing. And one thing, you know, in the first place I lived, it was just, they're all on the pool deck. Yeah. The, you know, there were no shelves, no nothing, just pool deck. Right. Um, and so then it's, grown to, to be here. And intermediate, I did have a space at one point that was much larger than this. Okay. Up in Cave Creek. Nice. But that's when I sold all my plants. Is that further north? It's further north. Is it pretty similar so, climate or? It's, uh, well, I'm at 1440 and they're about 2400. Okay. So Talking about it's, it's very elevation, similar, yeah. right? Yeah, very, very similar, yeah. Okay, okay. And the best part was it got sun from sun up to sun down. I think one Could of the things that I found kind of fascinating about the way that you're doing things here is, you know, as somebody that has not been doing it, I haven't been growing or collecting cactus since 2003. So for somebody like me, you know, initially I thought I definitely have to have a greenhouse. I have to make sure that these things are protected from the rain at all costs, mm -hmm. this and that. Now, I, I do live in a different area, so my climate is a bit different and we do get a bit more winter rainfall than you do here. But I found it to be a little bit illuminating for myself. Uh, it sort of taught me a lot about the plants that I saw in your collection, mm -hmm. realizing that, as a matter of fact, you don't necessarily need to have any kind of polycarbonate. Now this, of right. course, depends on where you live, but based right. on your climate and the plants that you have in your collection and your soil type and everything, you have found that this seems to be working. Yep. And yeah, so what is this? Me. This is not it's, your typical shade cloth that uh, you... It's something called uh, Illuminat. Illuminat. And so it's a woven silver colored mylar. Um, and they make it, you know, like any shade cloth, they make it a variety of different uh, uh, densities. And I've used it almost since the beginning, just because I, I like the look of it better than black shade cloth sure. or green shade cloth or tan shade cloth. Uh, but, and so uh, what percentage what do you used. have it at? This is 50%. Okay, so 50% for the intense sun of Phoenix, Arizona has proven to be pretty sufficient or have yeah, you noticed I could probably go that? I could probably go less in fact I'm gonna add another space on the other side okay so this wall is gonna go up and go over the top of the luminate on that one so it's gonna be a lot shadier gotcha. for things like seedlings and I have stuff in here that just you know too much Sun doesn't do do them much good okay gotcha. you know, so younger this little... thing's still red <laughs> And a red, and so if a cactus gets red like that, if it's in intense light, that's kind of a sign of saying, "Hey, all right, can you give me a Backing little bit a less little intense?" Bit. Yep. So, what what are some of the genus? I mean, I know, but for the folks at home, what are some of your favorite genera that you like to grow and propagate? Well, I pretty much uh, the majority of the plants I have are uh, North American, right? Uh, Mexican, United States, that kind of stuff. I have some South Americans, but. Yeah, you know, one one table out of eight. Let's go take a look. Now I know you see you got some you got some uh, you got some flowers on some small plants right here. Yeah, the turban of carpets do a good job, and I'm trying to figure out where those flowers came from. Oh wow! Look at that. 
Holy cow! So that that's that is a, uh, well, a hidden little seedling, offset I guess. down there. Oh yeah. Or a Probably. Offset. What do you think? These I are all guess. seedlings. Which one is this? This, this is, is gracilis. gracilis. I bought from uh, Corona Cactus. Yeah, this is beautiful. Yeah, you and I both this, have a yeah. love of uh, of turbine carpus. These were both eaten by rats at one point. And what? How long did it take for them to recover? Because they look like even really well. That was that. probably that was probably six years ago okay. that they got eaten. Yep. And so that's and then this one just came up with three more offsets. They came up with a fourth one, but it's not doing anything. So is this is these four heads? Is that the main? Is that one plant? All one plant. All one yep. plant. And yep. then you've got little seedlings that have popped yep. up. Well, these are these are new offsets. Offsets. Okay. Uh, they turbinocarpus offset strangely sometimes, you know, like this. Uh, which where what, it pops which uh, up. what is that one? That's uh, I think that's Bonazzi. Bonazzi. Okay, so that's and, one I don't actually have in, in my collection. And so this one, I had another one that was much more. The the offsets were much more random and not attractive to me. Sure. And uh, I sold that to somebody. <laughs> but. And so you. I hate you, it when I sell any plant. You <laughs> propagate these from seed. Of some from seed. I don't have a real good track record with seed. Okay. Um, I buy some as seedlings. I don't buy many big plants anymore. Right. Just because they're stupidly expensive. Yeah, and space um, too. I was I, I started work, you know fooling around with cactus in like 2003, and then 2012 I got divorced and sold four fifths of my plants. Okay. And then didn't just took care of you know you know I kept this these three right um, and uh, uh, and so I had a few this guy um, that I kept and and uh, uh, but you know then when I started back in it it was like yeah. you're asking how much yeah we went on a, went on a nursery tour down in Tucson last week or like a month ago I'd say and. Uh, it, uh, I was stunned. Like a plant like this would be one hundred and twenty-five dollars. Like this, like not this Brucci here, yeah. Brucci. And so, yeah, this is South America. Obviously, not these guys. I bought this from some gal for eight dollars off of Craigslist. <laughs> How long ago? Oh God, that had to be like two thousand five or two thousand six. Okay. Yeah, I mean it's crazy. The what I mean because I was I was collecting plants before uh, the pandemic hit. Right. But once the pandemic hit, it was insane to see like the what yep. what plants were going for. It was like, okay, well, yeah. I guess I've got all the all the of whatever genera that I was trying to get because I, you know, I'm not paying what some of these people are asking for certain things. But you know, yep. it is what it is. I, you know, some people value them like that. That's the times fine. change. That's fine. <sighs> Love these guys. These so guys. now and, and volunteers, you know, not seedlings, but. You get seed, free free seedlings occasionally. Right. Yeah, somebody wanted to buy a nice, uh, I have a couple of nice thelo cactus and I was willing to sell the actual main plant because it's mm -hmm. relatively big. And I'm kind of, the more you grow from seed, I think at least for me, or the more that you propagate in whatever means that you do it from, Right. Um, the interest in having, to, at least for myself personally, and I know I've talked to some other people that share this, is I've kind of lost uh, the interest in like trying to get that huge plant. Right, Because you, right. you're like, all right, well, if I can grow a ton of them, it's like, right. you know, I've got like 200 seedlings. Mm -hmm. Do I just, uh, yeah, okay, you know, right. certain things. Unless yeah. it has sentimental value well, as a gift You know, the other like thing that. is, if you have a bunch of seedlings of one, you know, particular species, then, you know, you might get something interesting or rare. Yeah. Or, or you know, just strange. I got out of this last. Where if you buy one big one, that's what it's going to be until it croaks. Well, the point of me bringing up the thelo cactus was that uh, I ended up not selling it because when I went to look at it, mm -hmm. the in, it's in a six-inch round pot and you know got about an inch of room around the plant and uh, the edge of the pot, and there was probably I don't know 50, 60 seedlings well, what, in it. What, what cactus was it? Uh, thelo cactus hexadrophorus, and it's oh, a nice okay. big one. Yeah, I mean, it's I, you know I, the size of a grapefruit, I guess. Mine over there don't. I haven't gotten any seedlings off them lately, but I have in the past. But the the bicolor, yeah, the one that's tipping way over, yeah, has got about 20 seedlings in the pot. And I, you know, I want to straighten it up, but I don't want to. I need to wait till the seedlings get a little bigger. Well, I've heard from multiple growers that I respect their opinions that uh, the 
seeds and the seedlings actually do much, much better in the pot with the mother right, plant. Right. You know, there's something to be said about the passing of the uh, yep. different nutrients and things like that and the hormones the, the, uh, through the through the well, roots. Well, that's how all these turbinocarpus and then there's probably a whole flat plus over there that were, they, they were on these pots. Yeah. And then when I originally moved here, you can see the white posts over there. I had a, my cactus thing was over there, but yeah. it was really shady in the winter. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, we get, we get violent winds at times. Okay. And it tipped the thing over, pushed a couple of the tables over. Yeah. So um, there was the ones with the turban of carpet. So I had to gather as many seedlings out of the dirt as I could <laughs> and, uh, and go from there. But, uh, I still have a bunch of them. And you've got a really nice collection of mammalarias too. Yeah, I've always always liked mammalarias. Let's go take a look. That I got Talaki's I have a... one of my favorites. Yeah. So you've got micro now are these yours, these little guys here? No, the microthelia seedlings? Okay. And this there's the the big one of mine. Keep going. This is now this is Talaki. Yeah, this is the big one. This is the big microthelia, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this Talaki is insane. That is a crazy specimen. Both of them actually one, yeah. really are. Yeah, I bought both of these from uh, Mesa Garden years ago with the Crucigera. He had them on his wholesale list so you could buy 10 of them for a dollar 80 a piece. <laughs> so you grew, you grew the, this is Mammalaria pseudopectinatus. It's pectinatus. Just pectinatus? Pectinifera, whatever. Pectinifera, that's right. Is, pseudo, <laughs> is it not pseudopectinifera? Nope, it's pectinifera. Oh, sorry, but I broke that. Yeah, okay, so mammalaria pectinifera, and these are your they seedlings. Came from seeds from, I had a big plant at one point and got some seeds off it. Now that one right there, is yep. it, did that get eaten at some point, or did it just no, grow it just, like that? It just grew like that. That's cool. That whole complex, the Huichlipotli, yep. Tlaki. I have a three-headed Huichlipotli, and my, the big one is over here. Yeah, that big one of yours is, I, I have now been, I went on like a total mission after I saw yours. And I realized how special yours actually is with that amount of black spines. Because right. not all and of them get it. Going for. And not all of them get it like that. So right. you you right. have a, a very beautiful um, clone of it. Those so then you've also got a whole bunch of uh, Areocarpus as well. Yes. The one nugget of information that, that oh. I have for okay. cactus growers is you notice these benches are about 40 inches high. Yeah. That's so I put my inspection goggles on and I can actually see the plants. If they were 30 inches off the floor, you'd have all kinds of bugs eating all your plants and you never Before know. Before you notice, yeah. Yeah, this does put them, I mean, it's actually really nice to have them all right up, right up at the top. where you can see them. I don't, mine are not as high, they're lower. They're not 30 inches from the floor, I don't think, yeah. but. Um, so you've but, got a, a beautiful Areocarpus collection. But yeah, these three are, are, actually these four are from seed. I had a huge plant that had an offset like this one. Okay. But it was about this big. And when I was selling all my cactus, I sold it to somebody in Russia for 300 bucks, <laughs> which I'm sure these days it would go for double that. Yeah. Can't but even they're all from seed. And so it was, how old is, like, are, are they from the same seed batch or? Yes, they are. They, okay. in fact, they, this was in a pot like this. So this Fisseratus here? This Fisseratus, and it was small. I bought this in like probably 2008 or 2009, and gotcha. it was a, you know, a tiny seedling. Right. Um, and so it had, it wound up with all these seedlings in it. So I dumped it all out and put everything in pots, and, and these things grew. I had probably- So these were in the pot with this? Yep. Interesting. Eventually. So now, uh, do you get any winter rain here at all? Yeah. And. So with all these plants, that you're not worried about the Areocarpus getting wet in the winter or your big old Astrophytums getting wet in the winter? No? No, the only time, like, I, think, I guess it was last year, we had like, we had two big storms come through where okay. it was like heavy rain for, you know, two days. Right. And then a week later, same thing. You know, but that's the only time I ever recovered the plants. Okay. And the only thing that would make me want to put plastic up would be to try and keep it warmer in the winter time. Okay. And have you done that yet or no? No. no. So, and now you met, mentioned something about spider mites. So you've got yes. some plants right now that you've, you're dealing with spider mites on? Yep. What, how do you deal with that? Well, I do a variety of different things. Uh, uh, the, the 
first thing is to get your x-ray goggles so that you can find them. <laughs> oh, I just sprayed it a few minutes ago. But you can, yeah, you, see, you can't even see there's like webbing in here. Gotcha. Um, and so that's that's the telltale sign and, and you try and get to it before it gets to webbing. Because... And so what do you spray when you have spider mites? Well, so I just got something, I think it was, it's a pyrethrin spray that says it's for mites and everything okay. else I was using didn't say it was for mites and it didn't really work very well. Okay. So I just bought a commercial product. What is your soil mix like? I use uh, turfus and pumice and pumice is relatively new and core. Core. Interesting. And what is the percentage of? It's well, probably, I, I'd say it's probably two parts pumice, two parts uh, turfus, and one part core. Okay. Or maybe a little less. Okay. And do you do you fertilize? I do with every uh, with every water. A tomato fertilizer. The uh, Miracle Grow tomato, tomato fertilizer. fertilizer yeah. And do you use that at full strength, quarter no, 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 strength? No, 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 no. I use I use one tablespoon in that. About a tablespoon and a half on that entire barrel, so it's very weak. Gotcha. Um, I, I've found that you can get some weird growth if if you fertilize too if much. It's, if conditions are ideal and they've got an excess of food, uh, they can uh, they can do weird things. They can do weird things. Well, dude, thank you so much for taking the time to show us Thanks around. Thanks for coming out. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching the video. Make sure you like and subscribe. Go follow Tim on Instagram, Cactus the Cactus Hut. Cactus the Hut. And uh, yeah, until the next time, peace.